Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. Remember Barbie dolls? Oh, yeah. Remember Mrs. Beasley dolls? Mmm, yes. Sally wets when she cries? Not so much. I got some dolls I want to talk about. They're not like those dolls at all, Ronnie. <laughs> they're dolls, and they're next on Men Are So Smart. Nice. When I read this story, <laughs> I thought, this is a Men Are So Smart story. Oh. <laughs> Ronnie, we have done two, three, maybe as many as four different episodes on sex dolls. Mm -hmm. We've come right out and told you, Ronnie would never go to a sex doll. Me, I'm open to the idea. <laughs> and I know you're saying, oh my God, the guy's a freak. Where do you hear this? Maybe, maybe it's not. It's not just me. <laughs> a nondescript Toronto shopping plaza is set to welcome a new tenant that advertises itself as the first sex doll brothel in North America. Hmm. Aura Dolls, which will operate alongside a nail salon. Where else would you put it? Massage parlor and dry cleaner promises to bring its patrons an exciting new way to achieve their needs without the many restrictions and limitations that a real partner may come with. Uh, the company's marketing director told City News that there will be, get this, no human staff, uh, none in the brothel section, and that customers are unlikely to bump into a single person during their visit. So, anonymous. Yes, that's important. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, they put their payment down on the counter and they go straight to the room. We don't have to have staff there, just a camera. What? A camera? Oh. I don't think I want, I'd rather have the staff there. Yeah, sorry. Hmm. Uh, the payment is taken at the beginning, you go into the room, do your time, and just leave. The company's website states that it hopes each visitor can enjoy any fantasy or fetish without judgment or shame, bringing the ultimate sexual experience. But at what cost, Ronnie? Well, well here we go. All right. Uh, customers will be charged from $60 to $742 for their time with dolls and are promised that each is thoroughly sanitized between clients. Wait a minute. I thought there was no human staff. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> obviously there is somebody in a back room or maybe in a dungeon downstairs. We try to focus on the fact that since we have this service for men who have these dark, violent fantasies, instead of putting out the urge to act aggressively, they can do something like this, which is safe for everyone. Except the doll. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Toronto City Council member uh, John Fillion told CBC uh, that people in his community were concerned about the business and that although he has an open mind about what sort of behaviors people want to do, people do all sorts of things that we kind of wish they wouldn't in a perfect world. But they do. They do. While yeah. Aura Dolls might be a first for North America... The world's first brothel showcasing silicon sex dolls opened in Germany last year, and we told you about it. We did that. that story. Owner Evelyn Schwartz has told the Metro that 70% of Boar Dolls customers returned for more, and that for many, it is not a fetish, but more of a curiosity. Um, I, I gotta tell you, I have some concerns in a couple of different ways. Number one, pornography has really done some damage on intimacy between two people. Yeah. I think what happens is with pornography, the more you watch, the more fantasy oriented it has to become and fetish oriented. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, I think in that sense, it may not be a good thing because men and women were meant to be together on this earth. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had those Adam and Eve. True enough. Okay. 
I mean, it it is just um, I don't know. It seems I don't want to paint this with a broad brush stroke, but it seems like people that would go there are going to be a little bit different than person going to a a nail parlor to have a mani pedi. Um, but they say it's out of curiosity. Don't you have the slightest bit of curiosity? God, I really don't. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, it may be, and like I said, I, I can't judge everybody because I don't, I can't judge anybody, honestly, because I probably do enough quirky things that, you know, other people wouldn't consider doing, but, um, you just get in your comfort zone and maybe somebody doesn't particularly want uh, a, a real female sex partner or maybe their wife won't do the types of things that he wants to do. So in that respect, maybe it is. Maybe it's a good thing. Okay, so you have the customer. You have the sex doll. Who makes the sandwich? <laughs> there has to be a paid employee. Again. For that, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they have a vending machine. You wave to the camera and they bring you a sandwich. <laughs> ah, ah. I don't know. I just, you know, I, I've seen some video on these robots and they are fascinating yet terribly scareful. Is that a word? <laughs> it is now. Scareful. <laughs> hey, be scareful. That's hot. Uh, no, uh, you know, I mean, some of them talk. It's a little bit. Have you ever seen the Will Smith movie uh, I Robot? No. Uh, the the robots. I, I have in seen there. Westworld. <laughs> I've not seen Westworld yet. I'm hoping to. But the robots in I Robot are very human like. Uh, in the way they speak, they obviously they don't look human, but um, they have a lot of human-like features. And I don't know, yeah, maybe that's maybe somebody that had a, a very strong liking to the movie iRobot would be way more into it than I would. They have robots that react to what you say. They you say something, they store it. And they can recall it. And they can be programmed. They can be programmed with any by in any language. They can be programmed to say sentences. Essentially, with a female robot, follow me on this, with a female robot, with AI, a man, essentially, who cannot for whatever reason, develop a relationship with another person slash woman slash man can have a relationship with a doll. Taking the woman completely out of the equation, Ron. Wow. Think about that for a second. Well, you, you better make sure that you have all your lies memorized because if you tell the robot one thing and then the next time you tell them, is something different? Yeah. The robot knows. Yeah. Your wife might forget, but that robot won't forget. <laughs> hmm, I'm going to need to rethink scare, this. She doesn't care how many touchdowns you scored in high school football. No. Uh, Just as long as you continue to sell shoes. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Bundy. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, you know, again, um, curiosity. I have curiosity. I'm not saying I'm going to act on it. Um, if I had $60, my mom used to say this, if I had $60, I'd stay home all day and count it. <laughs> it wouldn't take all day. You want to borrow $20 to go out? <laughs> Do you know if I had $20, I would stay home and count it all day? Yeah. That's not a lot of money. Yet. $60 isn't even a lot of money. All right, I'm asking you right now. Let me know what your feelings are right down there below. Would you or wouldn't you? Are you at least curious about a sex robot? What are your feelings on the intimacy point of this? What if a man and a woman are in a sexless relationship? And, and let's put the shoe on the other foot as well. So, and I know eventually there will be, if there is a demand, there will be male robots as well. I know there are some now. 
but to the point of actually having a brothel that exists, I'm not sure I see that. But my point is that um, you can el totally eliminate the need for another person by having a robot. And Does you know, that scare you? I wonder, because we've just been dealing with here in Sacramento two guys that were uh, caught. They were age-old rapists. They were rapes from... The 70s. From the 70s and one from the 80s. So I wonder if a person who was a serial rapist had a robot to use to, you know, overwhelm and to victimize if maybe rapes could be curtailed somewhat. That's hmm. really interesting to think. Hmm. hmm. We live in this time. We live in this day and age. Yep. And, you know, if it didn't need to be invented, it wouldn't have been invented. Yep. So there's obviously a need. Like, How great is that need? Like well, the pet rock, that was needed. It, it seems to be working in Germany. The sex boxes that we talked about not too many shows ago are working in Switzerland. And now these dolls will be in Toronto. And um, this place should have just opened. Yeah, it's, I think it's was so September. So we could probably get you the address if anybody is interested. <laughs> <laughs> or you know what if you'd like to send me a gift certificate there you go a gift card just like massage envy has yeah, yeah yeah that's perfect ronnie <laughs> send it to lou at men are so smart dot com yep ronnie will pay for my flight to toronto absolutely yeah of course <laughs> that ain't we'll, take it, we'll take it out of the budget from the show <laughs> right there we go <laughs> yeah. we can write it off <laughs> research and development that's what it is ron all right, uh, information is below, sponsors below, website below. Uh, anything else you can think of, Ronnie, I'm forgetting? Yeah, I think that nailed it. Uh, MenAreSoSmart.com, check it out. Yeah. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. Next time we'll see you on Men Are So Smart.